everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here. And today we're doing something a little bit differently. Now, this was requested by a few people on the channel. So I figured, you know what? You're crafting with Miss Crochet and Coffee. So we're going to do some crafting. So this day, for today's craft, we are going to do punch needle. Now, look, listen, it has been forever since I've done a punch needle, but I still know the basics. I'm not to teach you guys the ropes of how to do it, like the like the very basics of it. There are different techniques and different uh, stitches and stuff like that, but we're gonna teach you the basics. So first things first, you get your punch needle set, and as you guys already know, I'll link it up in the eye. I just unboxed these not too long ago, so I figured I would show you how to do one. Now, I probably won't finish the entire kit with you today, but, I'm going to try to do as much as I can and explain as I go what I'm doing and how to do it so that you can go venture on and do it on your own. So first things first, you want to make sure you have all your materials. I have my paper here, which tells me which colors go where. Um, and that's essentially all it tells you. It gives you some steps at the bottom. And then you have your kit here, which should come with everything you need. And as you know, in the video, I put the pattern in the hoop. It's really loud. So we're going to get rid of that plastic. So I already put the pattern in a hoop. Um, you want to make sure your pattern isn't stretched to the point where it's distorted. But you want to make sure it's tight like a drum because you're going to have to poke through. This is like, um, I want to say it's monk cloth. It's a type of cloth that when you puncture it, it doesn't stay wide. Uh, it actually will kind of shrink back so that it holds the yarn. And then it gives us our yarn colors. And this little string, which I will show you what that's for here in a few minutes. So, because you're probably wondering why they put this random piece of trash in your, <laughs> your kit. And you'll see why. So, we're going to open this up. And we know brown is for the bear. Which, there seems to be a lot of brown. Well, this, okay, this brown is for the background. This blue is for the clouds and stuff. We have another string in here. In case you get rid of that one for some reason. Uh, we have more brown, blue, red, yellow, pink, and white. So we're just going to lay these up here so we can see all of our colors. So there are all of our colors up there. And then we have our string here. And then you have this. Now this tool can be used for this project. Um, I have another tool that I like to use which is this here. It came in another set that I have, um, another punch needle that I've done. But uh, this one is adjustable, so you can adjust how long you want your strands to be whenever you're poking it through the cloth. So it goes D, C, B, and A. So if you want long strands, like if you're doing a leaf or something, you can use a longer strand. If you're doing something like a little hat or something, you can use this one. Uh, and it just goes down from there. And then this is the setting I use the most on this. But we're not going to use this because I'm going to only show you how to use this with the stuff that came in the kit itself. Um, so we are going to first get our string. And we're going to start our punch needle. So we're not going to start with the background first. I'm actually going to start with, let's say this puddle underneath the bear. So if you see right here, uh, sometimes your patterns will not be printed on here. You'll have to trace them on. But uh, if you get them from this company, they will be already on the pattern or on the cloth. So yeah, so when you get them from FG Normal, uh, they will more than likely have the pattern printed on them already, which makes it super easy so you can just punch and go. Um, so what are these little strings and what is this little tool? This is your punch needle tool here. Um, I like the longer one just because it gives you something to hold on to, like a pencil. Um, you can hold this one like a pencil, but it's not like the best tool, obviously. But uh, just to get started, just to see if you can do it, if you like it, using this isn't too bad, and I'll show you. So first things first, you're going to take that piece of what looks like fishing wire, and you're going to poke it through the hole of the needle. Now, I'm going to bring you down into the business. So if you look here, there's a hollow hole inside this needle. Not the back hole, not, not this hole here, but going down inside. See how you can see the punch needle all the way on the other side? See my hand? 
you're going to put that through there. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold it in half and then you're just going to shove it down the hole. And you're going to shove it all the way down until you get to the bottom just like this. And since we're starting with the little puddle underneath the bear's feet, we're going to use this color because that's what color is used here in the picture. So this little color underneath his feet, we're going to use this color, which is number 31. So they'll usually have it bound up like this so that it stays together and it's not all like crazy. So we're just going to unhook that. Put the that in there. So you're just going to stick your yarn through that loop you have. And then at the other end, you're just going to pull it through. Boom. Just like that. So you just pull it up through the back. Comes out of the front. Now that little hole is now where you're going to focus. So now you're going to take that same fishing wire looking thing. And you're going to bend it in half. Poke it through the hole. Then you're going to put your yarn through the hole. If it'll stay still. Put your yarn through the hole. And then again, pull it through. Boop. There you go. You just... You just thread it your needle, okay? You want to leave a little bit of a tail. It doesn't have to be super long. And now you should be ready to punch. So how do you punch? You just you just punch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline where the puddle is, and then I'm going to fill it in. I don't want to fill it in as I go. I want to outline first and then kind of do a kind of give it that pattern of a circular motion. So what I'm going to do. I was going to go to the edge right here. See your little edge piece here? And if you tilt it, you should be able to see the holes. So I'm just going to punch it through this first hole right here. Bam. Once you punch it in, you're going to want to flip it over and pull that little bit of a tail through. You want that tail to be on this side because this is the back side of it. So we're going to pull that tail through. And if the tail is too long and you want to tighten it up a little bit, now is where you tighten it. Boom, just like that. So the needle is in there, and then you just follow the line. Now, when you pull it out, you don't want to pull it out too far, okay? You pull it out where the needle is still touching the cloth, and then you punch it through again. Boom. And you do that the whole way around. And I'm skipping, like, every other hole and doing it that way. If you happen to make a mistake and you pull it up too far, what you can do is you can pull the tail in and it'll tighten it up for you. And since we're not doing the bear's feet, we're going to go around his feet. Also, when you're doing this, you see how that opening where the thread came through is pointing towards the direction I'm going? You want to keep that going. You don't want that piece to be facing any other way besides the direction that you're going. So as I'm turning... I'm going to turn the needle, and we're going to punch up this way. Now, you can punch through every other hole or every hole. It's up to you how tight you want your stitches to look. Just be very careful not to punch and hit your hand. So we're just going to punch. And my hand's back there just to give it a little bit more, uh, making sure it's nice and tight. So I'm kind of pushing it up a little bit. So now we're going to turn, turn that needle. We're going to turn again, go this way. Sorry if I hit the tripod. I just want to make sure it's close enough where you guys can see what I'm doing. And you should get something that looks like this. Yeah, we outlined his feet. And see how I stopped and I stopped touching the cloth and I got this long strand. You don't want to then continue going. What you want to do, real easy, you just pull it. Pull it where it's tight and your needle is again touching. Don't pull it too tight because you will pull out those loops that you just did. So you want to just lightly t pull it. And then you can get back to work. So I'm going to pull it so that I'm touching. And I'm just going to punch through again. And you want to make sure there's slack on your yarn because if it's not, it can pull the loops out. And now we're going to turn. And you can turn your project. 
it's in a it's in a hoop, so it's not going to go anywhere. And you just want to make sure that eye of that needle is pointing towards the direction you're going. And you're just going to punch along that line. And again, make sure that your needle is not coming up off that cloth. So when you pull out, you just slide it over. Pull out, slide it over. I'm trying to get you down a little bit further so you can see. And then I'm just going to go here. And what's keeping it together and from not raveling is that the fact that the cloth is tightening up around it so that it doesn't come apart. But if you happen to make a mistake, it's real easy to fix. I'll show you that here in a few minutes when we get to the end here. All right, and we're back at the beginning. And then say you pull it up by accident or your child gets a hold of it because I have children. And it pulls it out. So we're going to pull that one stitch out. Real easy fix. And you don't want to pull it too hard because you can continue pulling the stitches out. And you don't want to pull out what you just did. So again, do like you, I said before. Just pull that back end of the yarn. And then poke it back through. Okay. So now we're going to turn again. And this is where we're going to fill in. And if again, see how it came out a little bit? Easy. Just pull it till your needle is touching again. Find a spot. Boom. Now inside here, you're just going to kind of eyeball it. I'm just going to outline where I was already outlining at. So we're just going to punch through. I'm staying real close to the stitches I was already near or that I've already done. And it, you will have to force it down a little bit, and that's okay. You just don't want to, when you force it down, you don't want to then force it back up. Because, again, you don't want your loops to come out. So you just want to be really careful. Just outline what you just did. Essentially, that's all it is. It's just making the pattern. You don't want to do it too big. So you're just going to, every couple of spaces there. And then you're going to turn. And it might not look perfect at first. And if you want to try again, feel free to pull out your stitches. It's really easy. And try it again. And we're just going to go up into this little, see this little patch of nothing right there? I'm just going to point the needle to the way I want to go. I'm going to fill that in. And now that we're turning back this way, I'm going to fill that in. I'm going to come in between these two stitches here. So right here is like a little bit of a bald spot right there. So it's hard to see, but there is a little bit of a bald spot right here. And I'm going to punch through there to get back on track to where I was going. And now I'm back on track and I'm just going to keep outlining. And we've come to another one of those spots where there's a big hole. Now you can continue just tracing and continue going in a circle or you can fill it in as you go. Um, I'm one that kind of likes to fill it in as I go. So I'm just going to go up here. Again, make sure that eye is pointing in the direction that you want it to go. We're going to turn this. Make sure you're finding a hole. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to turn it again. And we bring it out like this. Don't bring it out the whole way if you don't have to. If you want to turn it and you want to make sure that needle's going the right way, you turn it like this. Make sure that eye is pointing out. Fill in that little gap there. Boom, we're back on track again. And again, you will have to force it down a little bit, and that's fine. And then we're at our last one here. And then you, it's hard for you to see it on camera, but there's a space there. You see there's a space there with some of the stitches not showing. So we're just going to go up in there. And we're going to add some more yarn there. All right, and then that's my last stitch there. And then to check it to make sure there's no gaps or spaces, you can push it up with your finger. And as you can see, there's no gaps going on. If you turn it over, 
And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave that needle in there like that. This should look really textured and shaggy. Should all be about the same size. So there we have it. And then to start another color, we're just going to lift that little tail up. We're going to grab our scissors or your snips. Snips would probably be better. You want something sharp because you don't want it, uh, you don't want it to fray. So you want to be able to do one clean snip. Leave that tail there, and then you're just going to pull your needle out. That tail, do not pull it, okay? We're just going to leave it there for right now. It's not hurting anybody. So, next thing we're going to do is these little raindrops, okay? Because we already have the blue on our hook, so why not? So, it's literally only maybe one or two stitches here so we're just going to poke through pull that tail see how i pulled the tail through again if it's too long pull it back a little bit pull it back i'm just going to do two spaces here and essentially what you're going to have to do is for each one of these you'll make one or two uh little things and then you'll have to cut the yarn so I'm going to pull that last stitch out because that's going to be the ending stitch, okay? So I just went and did one right over the hole. And now my tail is super long because I pulled out that stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this back piece here until my tail shrinks. That should be good. I'm not sure why you're all crooked like that. Okay, so gonna pull that tail to make sure I have a good tail and then I'm gonna poke through again make sure that needles going in the direction you want it to go I'm gonna pull just a little bit of the tail up snip it off so we got our first raindrop and if it happens that something happens like this where part of it comes up you can either snip that or push it back down and then you can kind of fluff it with your needle here. Just take the point to the side and fluff it up. I pulled it a little bit whenever I put it down. So that it's all puffy. And we're going to do the same thing to the next one. We're going to go down. Pull that tail out. If the tail's too long, that's when we pull the other side. And we're going to do another one right at the top here. Boom. Turn it around. Now this part can be tedious because it has a bunch of little spots. Got our next raindrop. We're going to pull that tail out a little bit more. Give us some slack on the other side. Now I don't need that long of a tail. So we're going to put it in. And I'm literally only doing two stitches. We're going to pull that tail. Make sure you're pulling the tail of the one you're working and not the one on the other side because you don't want to pull it out. And then we're going to lift up. Make sure that tail's a decent size. It's actually a little long. So when I'm, when I'm feeling back here with my other hand is how long the tail is. I don't need a tail that long. So I'm just going to pull it. And then I'm going to pull it back through the needle until it's touching the fabric again. And then I'm just going to punch. And then I'm going to take it, snip it. And we're just going to keep going just like that. Now this is just for this pattern. Like if you have a pattern that has something like this on it, this is how you would do those little spots. So we're going to pull that through here. Shorten that tail. Don't mind the dog barking. Hold on. All right, so I had to pull that last strand out because I came out of the hole. So I'm going to go in, flip over, cut. That's why you want to make sure you have sharp snips. You don't want to deal with that. Pull that back out. We're going to fluff that up a little bit. Pull that tail down just a little bit. We're going to go in. Pull the tail through. Make sure it's just not a long tail. 
and then we're gonna lift up and then you're gonna make sure you're still touching the cloth and then push down again flip over snip boom and that's how we're getting our raindrops here just two little stitches so one make sure that tail isn't too long and two and I'm kind of going diagonally on the thing so when you look at it it might be touching four corners but that would make the raindrops look a little too big for me so I'm just going to uh, do the two corners and again I pulled it up and I wasn't supposed to so just pull it back down and push it back through little tail You don't want to leave a long tail because you don't want to waste the yarn that you get with the kit. So we're just going to fluff that up a little bit. We're going to pull that tail out. This is actually turning out really cute. So we're going to pull this out. We're going to fix and make sure that our tail isn't too big. We're just going to catty corner it up here. Boom. Don't take it out. Flip it over. Snip that tail off. Boom. Fluff it up a little bit. Put it down. Pull. Pull up. Go into the next one. Boom. So I think you pretty much get rain droplets. And don't worry, if you need to take your time, pause the video, rewind, rewatch it. That's why I'm making it, so you can go back at any time and rewatch it if you have to. Uh, if yours doesn't come out perfect, don't worry about it. Don't beat yourself up over it. That's part of the fun of learning a new craft. If it is new or refreshing yourself, it's making those mistakes so you learn from them and you don't make them again. You're going to make mistakes no matter what you... how perfectly you try to do things so just learn from your mistakes and move on there's no need beating yourself up over it or anything up oh, I lost my thread here and so what happened was the thread came out right in my mouth and the thread done came out of my needle so we're gonna punch it we're gonna thread it like we did before so we're gonna fold that fishing wire in half shove it down the tube insert yarn and ins insert the yarn Okay, all right. Insert the yarn. Make sure it doesn't fall out. <laughs> Pull it through like this. And then go to the back of it where that little thing is. Push it through. Back. Loop. Make sure it's a loop so you can pull your yarn through. So you're going to put your yarn in the loop. Pull it through, boom, thread your needle. So we're gonna try that again. So we're gonna make sure there's some slack, make sure there's nothing on our yarn. So we're gonna go down. We're gonna go back here, make sure we're pulling the tail, oh, sorry, make sure we're pulling the tail, flip it back over on this side. Boom, leave it in. I'm trying to get my scissors here. And you snip it. Pull that just so that yarn doesn't come out. We're gonna do that again up here. So we're gonna find our hole. Don't worry, we'll move on to something that's not the raindrop here in a few minutes. <laughs> Again, I might not do this whole thing with you guys, but I want you guys to get the point of, you know, how to do it. So you push it in once, and then you find a second hole and put it in again. Snip. And again, if you have little frays or something, you can just pull them off because I have some sh shedding going on there. Um, you don't want to pull too much on your threads again because it can come up. 
So we're going to go down, pull, down, take our scissors, and snip. Bring that up. Again, you can fluff it by just pulling on the sides of it. You're just going to kind of pick at it, and it'll fluff it up. So we're going to go into this one, make sure our tail's in, and then go to the corner. Snip that off, pull it out. All right, one more. We're going to punch it through, get our tail out, loosen that, or give us a little slack on that tail there. And then we're going to punch it through the other way, and then we're going to snip it. There we go. And then we have our raindrops. So we have our water puddle at the bottom and then our raindrops on the side. So let's see our pattern here. So we have the raindrops going over here as well, which I can do those real quick. I'll speed those up so you're not bored to death before we get to the cloud because I just want to get that part over with because it is kind of tedious. So this will probably be one of the few parts that is sped up because you just watch me go through a whole however long of that. So. moving too fast feel free at the bottom of this video if you look on this side of the screen I believe it's this side it might be this side I don't know how it loads up but on the bottom of the screen if you scroll well you don't really have to scroll but if you're looking at the bottom of your screen you should see a gear down there at that gear uh, if you press the gear it'll give you a bunch of different options for stuff but if you press it and you hit uh, if you press the gear, it'll give you a bunch of options. One of them is playback speed. You can speed me up, slow me down, or just rewind me if you need to, you know, go back. So if I'm going too fast, no worries. You watch this at your own pace. Again, you're not going to be perfect at this right away. You might, but more likely you won't. So just keep trying, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is this adorable little cloud right here. So we're going to fill in this little cloud. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of blue on this, this kit. So we have the blue here for this, uh, I think it's like a leaf or something. And then we have the blue for the cloud, the outline of the umbrella, and his scarf. So. Let's go for the cloud. So we're going to start. We're going to find where we're going to start at. You can start wherever you want. I'm going to start on the outline of it. I like starting on the outline because then I can fill it in in like a circular motion and it looks really cool. So we're going to start. And again, remember your needle needs to be pointing in the way that you're going. Lift. Make sure you have slack on the yarn that you're using and you're not pulling it too tight. And then once you get the hang of it, you can go faster. You don't want to go too fast because you don't want to make a mistake. We're going to give it some more slack here. And right now it's touching the side of my hoop on the inside. So I have to get as close as possible 
to the corner without doing too much damage because it's right there on the thing. So you want to make sure your pattern isn't touching that hoop on the inside because it can mess up the flow of things. So we get that one. So we're going to go here. And you see how that hole is much bigger than the rest of them? All you have to do to fix that is pull it out, tighten it up, and try again. No biggie. Takes like 30 seconds. And you're just going to tighten it up. And boom. There we go. And then we're just going to keep going around. Be careful of your fingers. Turn it. Always remember to turn that eye in the direction that you're going. And again, I'm skipping maybe two, one or two holes to get to my next hole. Alright, so that one didn't want to stay, so we're going to pull that again. We're going to try that one more time here. Again, make sure you're not pulling on any of your stitches because you can get them to come out that way. And now we're just going to do like we did before. We're just going to outline this. And I'm just kind of going every other couple of holes, which back here I left a little bit of a space open so I'm going to go back then kind of leapfrog it out now you could fill it in however you want this is just how I'm doing it Back here is a little hole, so we're going to fill that in. We're going to leapfrog over here. And with this, you can essentially go until that yarn is all gone. leaving a hole back this way so we're just going to go back and fill in that hole and that's the end of that one so what you can do is you can pull that out and what I would do is take your little fishing wire if this occurs Take that fishing wire, stick it through that hole you just made, because it's going to be a little bit of a bigger hole, so you see the hole? I'm going to take the fishing wire through it. I'm just going to do it like I'm threading the needle. So I'm just going to pull it through. Bloop. Just like that. Okay. And we do have more blue. And I want to say this is like a size 5 yarn. And again, we're going to thread our needle. And once we finish up this cloud we should be done. I think you would get the point of how to do it. But I just want to finish this cloud with you guys so you can see. I'm going to continue working on this after I'm finished recording and I'm going to try to have what it looks like. Uh, by the time this video goes up, I'll have what I have done posted and show you guys what it looks like. 
So here we go. We're just going to put the yarn through here. And because yarn is a, made up of a couple of different strands, that's why it's nice to use this tool because it's very helpful in getting you to thread it all the way through. And then we're going to thread it again through this back hole. put it through again pull it through put the fishing wire off to the side push that back down all right so we have our tail and everything I'm just going to go back to where I was, which is about right here, punch through, pull the tail through, a little tight there, pull that through, and I yanked it a little bit, so I want to make sure that tail isn't too big, so I pulled that to loosen it, and there we go. And then you just go back to punching. So we're going to find where we're going. Pull that back part of the yarn. Boom. And essentially for this part, you're literally just outlining where you just went. Just making sure that that needle is pointing in the direction that you want it to go. Feel free to move your project around. It's not going to hurt it. Just make sure not to pull any of the threads that you've already put down because it will pull them up. We're going around again. Another reason why you want it nice and taut because then uh, when you're doing this it doesn't essentially have give to it so it makes sure that you get a tight fit. I'm going to twist this around, bring that up. And that's all it is. That's all punch needle is. It's literally just punching through your cloth to make these little loops. Being careful not to pull on the little loops because you don't want to unveil them or make them unravel. And you're just tracing where you went. Oh, see? If this happens, you see I got the long strand here. That means something didn't connect somewhere. So we're just going to pull this back. And I think it's just right here in the middle. I saw a bald spot. And we just keep going. If you notice a hole, go ahead and correct it, come back out, keep going.
Okay, and then when you finish, take your snips and just snip it off. Get yourself a decent sized tail. And then we're just gonna snip. Pull that out. Ta-da, you have a cloud. So there's our cloud and our raindrops and our water puddle. Now this part, this part, this part, this part, this part, the handle and the outline of the umbrella are in blue, which I'm hoping I have enough. But that is how you punch needle, folks. That is how you do it. I hope this tutorial was at some way helpful to you. If it was, why not leave me a like down at the bottom? Let me know I did a good job. With that said, folks, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about punch needle, please leave those down in the comment section below, and I will do my best to try to answer your questions the best that I can. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you're new to the channel and would like to see more random crafting just like this, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified anytime I randomly decide to put up a video. And believe me, it's random. But with that said, folks, I have to get out of here. I am going to continue to work on this, so you'll see finished results at the end, which is should be right after this. But with that said, I must now bid you adieu. But not before reminding you, wash your hands, don't touch your face, keep your six feet, and always try to be kind, be courteous, be cool.